We're going to look at a sample water shuttle setup using multiple portable ponds and siphon strainers. The idea is that the supply pumper or multiple pumpers will draft from a single pond while a constant stream of tankers fills secondary ponds. A transfer pumper will, in turn, move water from the secondary ponds to keep the primary pond full. Here's an overhead view of the setup. Note that there are two engines drafting from different ponds. The engine on the right is the supply pumper drawing from the primary pond. The engine on the left is the transfer pumper, which is moving water from the secondary ponds to the primary pond as needed. Tankers, like the one on the right, unload into whichever pond is empty under control of the water supply officer. Ponds should be kept filled in the following order. First, the primary supply pond. Second, the secondary pond which is feeding the transfer pumper. And third, any other ponds. When sizing up the water supply, officers should pick a location that has enough room for at least two pumpers on the curbside, at least two portable ponds, and room for tankers to maneuver in the street. As soon as the first pond is set up and filled, the supply pumper starts drafting from it. Meanwhile, a transfer pumper moves into place and a second, and maybe even third, portable pond is set up next to the primary pond and filled. Hard suction lines are run from each secondary pond to the primary pond, using ladders to bridge across ponds. Each hard suction has a siphon strainer equipped with a venturi fitting, which is attached to an inch and three quarter line. Each of these lines is then connected to the transfer pumper. The transfer pumper also drops hard suction to draft from one of the secondary ponds. As the water level in the primary pond becomes low, the transfer pumper drafts from a secondary pond and pushes 90 psi of water through one of the siphon strainers. This creates a suction effect that pulls water from the secondary pond over to the primary pond. Tankers line up, dumping into whichever pond has room for water. If multiple secondary ponds are in use, it is possible for two tankers to unload at once. Also, it is possible for multiple supply pumpers to draft from the same primary pond. For safety, it is essential that all personnel wear full protective gear and be aware of the arriving and departing tankers, which will often be moving very close to the ponds, creating a risk of firefighters being hit or pinned. A couple of observations from a safety point of view, uh, being a truck driver and uh, been to a number of water shuttles. Uh, when you're backing trucks up in the water area at the dump site, however many tanks you have, we have a tendency of going Stop! or radios. So. What I like to see happen at that site and when you're backing any truck up is some kind of measurement of how much distance you have. Because the truck driver has no clue. Some of the new trucks have cameras on them, they're really convenient, and some of them don't. Most of them don't probably. Ours doesn't. So uh, safety around the dump site areas is of utmost importance. It's a nice day today, no ice issue. You know, that time of the year where a chimney fire turns into a structure is coming. So safety uh, around ice is, is completely different. So when you're backing trucks up, please just, instead of just this or this or whatever hand motion you want to use, try to, try to give some kind of indication as far as how much the, that truck has left to go. And the trucks don't have, have to be absolutely plastered against a uh, dump tank. Most trucks can be a foot or two away and still make the, uh, the dump. And also, if you have a little experience around a dump site, <clears throat> the trucks don't have to be absolutely empty when they're being dumped. You get to the last couple 300 gallons where it's just dribbling out, get out of there. If you're the person in charge of the water level and you see that truck, yes, yeah, the head pressure is great in the beginning. As the head pressure reduces, the flow is less. You're taking up time. So leave a couple hundred gallons in those trucks, get them out of there, get the next truck in. The three different tank system worked out great when we had the water. Okay, and the water was flowing good. Talk about safety as cheap as saying. We try to keep everybody on one side of the ends of the tank. The open side where you're gonna be driving, the street side, keep people away from <coughs> Do not stand between the tank and the truck. Because guess what? A lot of us are experienced, some of us are inexperienced. You don't know who's in that seat. Experienced or not. Somebody calls you, 
hey, stop, stop, or they're doing this, or hey, George, something's going to happen. We were flowing on the average of five to six hundred gallons of water a minute out of each one of the uh, ladder trucks. Is that correct? Or is the truck driver? 27,000 gallons. How much? 27,000. 27,000 oh, gallons uh, out of the tip. time frame was if you divided it out, but that's what we're oh. We're about say, 600 I, gallons a minute. I was going to say, you're going to be first response to Mike down. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty darn good. Chip, where are you? We've got to talk to that truck. We were flowing between 500 and 600 when we were up, and we flowed a total of 8,900 gallons. And just one comment on, on the actual dump site. It's, it, that's a beehive. There's so much going on. So you just got to get in tune. If there's an officer who's in charge of uh, bringing apparatus in to dump, you got to listen to that one person. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the other 15 people are screaming at you to do. You got to listen to that person. Or and the driver operators, if you have a passenger with you, a lot of departments designate that you are to listen to that person only. So because it gets very confusing. I know this was a merchant setup, the way you had that tanker, but uh, we were sucking heat when it's exhaust, and luckily it wasn't a regenerated system. It was warm back there as it was. So in setting up, you might have to think if you're doing parallel truck like that because you're, you're, you know, it was tough back there. One thing we, uh, we've talked about we use recently is turn around, we get generators on the truck, take an exhaust fan, put an exhaust fan on, down the side, and blow between the trucks. You know, the opposite from where the individual stand or standing or working. Uh, when we set up at the very beginning, we should have taken an extra minute and, and flushed the uh, dry hydrant with a two and a half because we couldn't keep both lines going at 50 pounds. Feeding these lines, four inch lines, start them off slow and work your way up. You go with the inch and a half, so it's three quarters, you know. And I know the new people we're trying and we're working today, and that's the way we're going to get experience. But nice and gentle on those gates so they're not popping hose off the ground because if you pop a hose off the ground, two, one of two things is going to happen inside of a pump, the parts are going to start loosening up, or the end of a nozzle, something's going to happen. Dry hydrants, what's everyone running for? Uh connections. Are they using storage, five inch, six inch? Six inch screw. Six inch screw? Yep, four and a half inch and six inch. You still got four and a half inch? Good. What do you guys have? We have six. Six. Yeah. We had an issue at your guys Columbia about a Route 6 fire. The uh, you guys had four inch or four and a half down there by Leventis. Yep. We don't have four and a half to a six inch and we ended up stealing off the Hebron's tanker. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.